With regard to diet, um, regardless of what you sometimes read in print, uh, chimpanzees are omnivores. Uh, they may uh, all eat ripe fruit when they can get it, but they can't always get it, and so they eat seeds and flowers and leaves and stems and stalks and bark and gum, etc., etc., etc. Particularly social insects are taken in a variety of chimpanzee populations by extractive foraging, assisted by tools. And then there is hunting and predation on small mammals, especially monkeys and young ungulates. So if we focus first on fonivory, on the consumption of animal matter, uh, this is a chance to do some bonobo chimpanzee comparison. It turns out there are some similarities. We now know that those hippie uh, bonobos uh, also take down monkeys and consume them just as avidly as uh, chimpanzees do. But we also know that there are differences, differences that you wouldn't find um, in the fossil record, but to do with the distribution of the meat that results from the hunts carried out by the apes. So when chimpanzees hunt, the meat distribution is dominated by the males, and there is wide variation in the amount, sorry, in the patterning of that distribution. Sometimes it's to other males in political alliance, sometimes it's to females, and so on. For bonobos, it's female-dominated meat distribution, and it's primarily to other females. Why do these meat-sharing episodes occur in these chimpanzees? I think that's where we could be of some use because there are a number of hypotheses out there that we're trying to test. Uh, various things have been put forward as possible explanations. Uh, intimidation, which is not very interesting. Harassment, which gets a little more interesting when you think of panhandling. But reciprocity, alliance, courtship, and even micronutrient, micronutrients have all been put forward as possible reasons that meat should get shared. And I just picked two uh, examples from that list. Recent work uh, at Thai shows that meat for sex does work in the long run. That is, males who give meat to females have a higher probability of mating and conceiving their offspring later. Whereas other hypotheses, like the meat scrap hypothesis, hasn't uh, held up so well because it, an alternative is that micronutrients that come from animal matter are, are much more easily uh, acquired by uh, eating insects than by chasing monkeys around in the treetops. I mentioned scavenging just in passing, but I have nothing much to offer. Um, we've had anecdotal accounts of scavenging in a variety of chimpanzee populations, but it's never achieved anything beyond anecdotal status. Now we've got David Watts' systematic study from Ngogo based on more than 10,000 hours of observation, and it remains something that's rare and probably unimportant. So this is one area where I don't think uh, chimpanzee studies has much to offer. With regard to herbivory or the consumption of plants, I'll just pick out two particular types where we've had some recent progress. Um, underground storage organs, that is a variety of things like bulbs, roots, tubers, corms, etc. We now know that the dry country chimpanzees who live in a, a woodland remarkably like that of Artipithecus um, use sticks and bark to dig up underground storage organs. And we know that the Tongo chimps um, dig up by hand tubers, not for uh, food but for water. And then we have cases of crop raiding chimpanzees who uh, go for underground storage organs in domesticated plants. Chimpanzees do eat monocots. Um, they do eat grass, uh, sedge and palm, when, when those are available. But they don't eat the seeds or the corms, they eat the pith. Uh, so this is unlike baboons and the way that they harvest grass. Pith is typically not swallowed, but is spat out as wadges after it's been sucked dry. And on the left, you see an example of some of the characteristic wadges that are produced when chimpanzees suck on the pith of the phoenix palm. Uh, chimpanzees do share plant foods as well as animal foods, we now know, thanks to recent work from Basu. And when it's a prized food stuff like a papaya fruit, then it may well go from the male, who does the risky business of obtaining it, and then it's passed on to uh, females, and it seems to be a courtship activity. And elsewhere as well, if surface water is unavailable in the dry season, then that one choice is to dig wells, which they do, um, or to dig up tubers. Relative limiting factors in chimpanzee home ranges on a daily basis are the ephemerality of resources, especially fruits, 
And these force chimpanzees into a kind of time-space problem, that is, being in the right place at the right time to catch the fruit when it's still available, but before someone else takes it, uh, in the sense of all the other frugivores, and to get it in the right state of rightness. And we now know that chimpanzees uh, use uh, Euclidean mental maps as a way to navigate around the forest to solve the space-time problem, um, as opposed to, say, something, uh, an alternative form of navigation, which would be orientation by landmarks. And we now know that chimpanzees have sufficient spatial memories that they can remember the location of thousands of individual trees. Um, Norman, the student of, of, of bushes at Thai, uh, actually mapped uh, thousands of these trees. And emer what emerges from this is, is rule-based foraging. Sounds suspiciously like cognition to me. Um, adult males, I'll just tell a little story here but it's because um, there are various aspects <clears throat> To, for, uh, to ranging. One is that we now know from Gombe that in times of scarcity, when food is lean, adult males go back to the ranges that their mothers had when they were babies, so when they were babes in arms being carried around by their mothers, um, long after the mothers have, di uh, are died, have died. So this is long-term long memory. So let me follow with some assertions. Um, the, the, the last common ancestor was not a chimpanzee, was not a bonobo, a gorilla, or any kind of cherry-picked combination of those, most likely. Um, living apes and humans, as well as uh, extinct uh, apes and hominins, were all derived relative to the LCA, as revealed to varying extents by the fossil record. Varying extents meaning that in the case of apes, we don't have much. But the important point to be made here is that inferences about function and performance that are based on structure alone that is, where the modeling is based solely on neural or skeletal material, underestimate repeatedly what chimpanzees actually do spontaneously in nature. So all of these things, bipedality, thumb forefinger opposition, long distance travel, aim throwing, male patrols, hunting, object transport, cooperation, spatial navigation, etc., are things which people speculating on the basis of structural material have, con <clears throat> have imposed constraints upon or have said could not be done by apes, but in fact are. And that's the source of much of the knowledge that goes into any form of modeling, whether it's referential or non-referential. So I think hypothetically crediting the LCA with the abilities of Pan is not an unreasonable thing to do. So I'll just finish with some hypotheses which seem to me to be reasonable ones to throw out about the LCA based on what we know about chimpanzees from recent findings. The LCA probably had a toolkit tool sets, tool composites, and compound tools for a variety of activities uh, for subsistence, shelter, self-maintenance, and sociosexual activities. Um, organic technology was highly probable, but archaeologically invisible, while I suspect lithic technology has been underestimated. Behavior and artifacts vary both within and between populations of apes, and probably do, did so with the LCA, uh, probably beyond basic environmental constraints. Subsistence technology probably involved transport and reuse of artifacts, which were recycled and retouched, because we find all those things in chimpanzees today. Percussive lithic technology was likely to be important and probably left diagnostic traces in terms of wear patterns. I think compound tools and tool composites were probably less important if for no other reason than one of the constraints that chimpanzees have, or at least as far as we know so far, is that they don't have meta tools, that is, they don't use tools to make other tools. Um, the LCA probably practiced opportunistic and tool assisted omnivory, both in acquisition and processing. Probably minimal harvesting of seeds and uh, USOs, probably because uh, containers are important to make that kind of acquisition um, energetically efficient. And as far as we know, apes in nature don't use containers. The LCA probably ranged widely, seasonally, informally, and intelligently. Climatically, uh, I'm guessing that the LCA was probably more constrained by hydrology than by rainfall in terms of access to surface water. LCA probably hunted and gathered, but did not scavenge both invertebrates and vertebrates and probably slept socially in beds at bivouacs or even at seasonal home bases. 